Rick, we'll hear next from my colleague from California, Mr. Liu. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Secretary Granholm, for your leadership. Within the Department of Energy is the National Nuclear Security Administration that does a great job trying to prevent nuclear proliferation. Uh, also within the Department of Energy, you have the Biological and Environmental Research Program, uh, whose mission uh, is to seek their underlying biology of plants and microbes as they respond to and modify their environments. So the Department of Energy has its hand in both nuclear and biotechnology issues. And my question to you is about the impact of generative AI, and I have a, a very specific question. With the advent of generative AI, it's given individual humans immense potential for power and knowledge in a way perhaps not seen before. Uh, that also includes people who want to do bad things, uh, includes terrorists, uh, includes uh, criminals. If you were to go on ChatGPT and ask, tell me how to make a nuclear dirty bomb, the current version would say it would be highly irresponsible to provide that answer. And that's because ChatGPT is not open source. Other companies have taken a different approach. So Meta has put out Llama 2, which is a very large generative AI model that also provides answers to questions. It is open source, and there are lots of benefits to open source. It can also have its guardrails removed much easier, and you could potentially have a world where people could, in fact, ask these large generative models with guardrails removed, hey, how do I make a nuclear dirty bomb, or how do I make uh, a virus that can cause the next pandemic. And I want to see if you or the Department of Energy has a view on whether these large journal of AI models should be open source at all. Um, as you rightly note, we are responsible for nuclear non-proliferation. So the example you give is a very ripe one. Um, we would be very concerned about open access to that kind of information because it is utterly dangerous to the world and to our citizens. Is there a, and I appreciate the conversation that Congress is having on AI at the moment. Um, we've, we've got a couple of um, efforts inside of DOE and with NSF regarding AI and how we make sure that it's both accessible for good, but that we have guardrails for bad, bad AI. And so um, we have the, the very large exascale computers we want to be the place where we build these foundational models, but we do that with the guardrails that are necessary to protect our citizens. That's a general statement. It has to be worked through, obviously. The, you, you have to carve this with a scalpel and not with an ax. But I think it's very important that for the safety of the planet, we do not put out information where nefarious actors can um, take us to pieces. Thank you. I'm glad you mentioned exoskeletal computers. Uh, as you know, Department of Energy has a huge role in increasing the speed of computing power, uh, including as well uh, quantum computers. I know you have made a lot of grants uh, to various uh, quantum computing applications. I don't know what the world looks like in, let's say, 10 years, where you have you know, ChatGPT version 12, and then you've got quantum computing that can go a million times faster. But I do know I would like the US to be in the lead, and so I want to ask, do you think you have enough money right now in terms of doing research R&D on quantum computing and other kinds of faster computing applications? Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that's an easy answer. The answer is no, because we do know that our competitors uh, are out there and investing a lot more than we are, and perhaps don't have the same kind of guardrails or thoughts about the nefarious uses of either quantum or AI, and so, we need to build up our defenses, and that means we need to be able to hire the people. We need to be able to have the systems in place to make, that, make us safe. Right. Uh, thank you. And then my last question is more uh, simply a request. Uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has done a great job coming up with a risk-based AI framework that can be applied to governmental agencies, the private sector, uh, and other organizations. And so I'd like to ask you and Department of Energy to look at that framework and apply it to the Department of Energy. Uh, Zoe Lofgren and I uh, and others have written a letter to the Biden administration basically saying, hey, look, this NIST agency has come up with this 
great framework, why don't you then apply it to uh, your entire administration? So if you could look into that, that'd be great. Great. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. We'll 